Hello to the best listening audience on this side of glory. I'm Kathy Ann with Heaven 1460 WXOK. And you know, sometimes I have the opportunity to get to know some amazing people and today is no different. We are meeting someone who is not new to the state, but she is new to the city. And I'm talking Tisha Powell with WAFB Channel 9. Tisha, we welcome you with open arms. When I saw Thank you, you in yellow, when, that's why I'm wearing yellow today, so that you'll know. When I saw you in that yellow and that spark that you gave us, the viewers, you captivated my attention. And I know I speak for the masses when I say that you captivated their attention as well. I know you're from Bayou Lafourche. I know you're not new to this beautiful uh, Louis the state, Louisiana, but mm -hmm. tell, us, tell us how does it feel? And I'm quoting you to be working in a station at a station that the amazing Donna Britt once walk those floors and so many made so many memories there. You know, Kathy, it's it's surreal. I was driving home yesterday and I was looking at just the street signs, you know, New Orleans this way, Baton Rouge that way, you know, looking at the exits, blue bonnet, you know, and I just feel so excited just to finally be back home again. My husband and I always had this dream, you know, we're gonna go home. Um, we're a military family. So that took us to Texas. We were in San Antonio. We were at Fort Hood and Colleen. Then we ended up at Fort Bragg. And we just knew we would come back, but we didn't know when. And um, we are just happy to be around our family again and to be bar part of this community. My husband is originally from Donaldsonville. Okay, he, okay. As a matter of fact, in the, um, in the promotional material, when I said he was from Ascension, he was like, why couldn't you say I was from Donaldsonville? He is very proud. He is a proud Donaldsonville boy. Um, but he did eventually move to Baton Rouge. And um, we met in Thibodeau okay. when his mother moved there. And, and I ended up in his high school for a short period of time. That's where we met. But um, just to be here, to be at this station in particular, you know, that I grew up watching, it's just, I am looking at just all the memorabilia around. I went uh, into the green room the other day and I saw a picture of Buckskin Bill. And I thought, oh my God, I did watch that growing way up. Back. <laughs> yes, yes, way back. So it's just, it's, it's so special to be here at this particular time. That is amazing. And I'm reading the the bio, I'm reading your bio, uh, your bio. And one of the things that just captivated me, uh, not the wonderful work that you've done, of course, always captivates me and everyone else. But this is a quote from the WFB news director. Uh, okay. and, um, it's it states that when we when we realize that Tisha was coming home, returning home to Louisiana, we immediately knew we wanted to bring her to our team. Also, he said, she has a personality that <laughs> is in the room, and I can't wait for our viewers to meet her. He put it, he put everything in perspective. I'm um, telling mm -hmm. When I first saw you, I knew you were coming. I read the, the press release. I was like, August 9th, I have to be tuned in to WAFB at four o'clock and at five o'clock because I have uh -huh. to show Tisha some love. And you were next to two, uh, two powerhouses as well, Elizabeth and Greg. But when I saw you, Tisha, just know that you are welcomed here with love. You are welcomed here with open arms and our hearts just overflow with joy, knowing that you are a part of the WAFB team. Thank you. You know, um, I was in North Carolina for a long time and even though their community treated me, you know, with such love, um, I felt like I had to, I had to earn it. And I feel like I have to earn it here as well. Um, I am a lifelong Girl Scout, um, Alpha Kappa Alpha, the Lynx, all of my organizations. I was 
part of the USO back in uh, North Carolina. And I hope to get involved in the community here as well to actually get out and meet people. And I just want to make a difference. Um, I believe representation matters, leading by example. And I really just want to, I'm excited about becoming a part of this community and actually meeting people face to face. COVID has made that really hard. And I thought, <laughs> how am I going to get an opportunity to do what I would normally do um, with COVID, with, without the, the gatherings that we would have where you would normally get out and meet people at festivals or at events or you know just giving back to the community somehow. It's gonna be a little bit harder, but I hope that in time that I can make the same impression here as well. It Absolutely. seems like I'm, I already have a head start, so that's good. <laughs> Absolutely. You would definitely do that. And uh, I, you have some beautiful sisters here that are a part of the Lynch. You have some beautiful sisters here who are part of Alpha, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I love so many of them, know so many of them. And from this member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporation, we welcome you. And if there's anything that I personally, along with Heaven 1460 WXOK, or anything that you think I can connect you to, please don't hesitate to ask because we're family now. You're stuck like Chuck with us. Yes. We are uh, absolutely elated that you are now a part of our uh, 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 drive home to, for some people getting off work, coming home to, and watch the television, four o'clock and 5 p.m. We are excited that you are part of the w WAFB team and Heaven 1460 WXOK, we love you. So welcome back home. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's, it's a different feeling. I don't know how much time we have, but it, it's definitely a different feeling because everywhere that we have lived, it just felt temporary. Like I, I, we don't want to do too much. We don't want to invest too much in, in this community because we don't really know how long we're going to be here. Mm -hmm. But I told my husband, as we were moving those boxes in. I said, I am not doing this again. <laughs> this is it. This is it. We, you know, we're home now. And it's, there's a different feeling to it when you know you're moving somewhere and, and that's going to be where you will stay. And um, it, it feels really good. I've seen a lot of family. I've had an opportunity to reconnect with a good portion of my family. I haven't seen that everyone awesome. yet, but um, awesome. most of them live in this viewing area. So, so tell me my this. dad. So mm -hmm. tell me this. Are you ready to get that when it gets cooler, are you ready to get that gum, that good pot of gumbo ready or that etouffee or what, what, what do you like to cook? What flavors do you bring from North Carolina to Louisiana and what flavors did you bring to other states coming from Louisiana? You know, I, I make red beans and rice. I, I have my staples. <laughs> My mother-in-law, she makes etouffee. I don't, I don't make that because she makes it. So awesome. I just go to her house and get it. But I do make gumbo. I do make red beans and rice. Um, we have our crawfish bowls. We, we set that up in North Carolina where all of the people from Louisiana would get together and we would boil crawfish that we had shipped in from Sulphur, Louisiana. Um, it was always an expensive proposition, but we used it as an opportunity to just get together and be ourselves. But you know, North Carolina has a very interesting menu. Uh, they have barbecue, but it's not what you would normally consider barbecue. It's, it's like a vinegary pulled pork with like a mm. yellow sauce on it. So when I first got there, I thought, okay, I'm going to have barbecue. It's going to be ribs. It's going to be brisket. You know, it, I typically know as barbecue when I was coming from Texas. Um, but th their food is different, but it, it grows on you. It grows on you in Texas. You know, I enjoy the Tex-Mex, but mostly what I cook is, you know, Cajun, red beans and rice, gumbo, those things. And then some country things in there. Some, I make good collard greens, good there mustard go. greens. There you go. <laughs> I go to Popeye's for my fried chicken. You, you know, my daughter said something very funny. She said, um, mom, I hate to tell you this, but um, Bojangles makes better biscuits than Popeye's. I said, well, it's time to go home. <laughs> long enough. I, I've got to I've got to brainwash these children a little bit better. <laughs> oh, that is that's fun. That is funny. That is funny. Yeah. Your children, I, you have two two girls. I think one is off at college and one is here. Yeah. With you talk about your beautiful babies. Oh, my children. So I have two children, and one is nineteen, and the other is seven. Aww. So they were born twelve years apart on the same day. 
Oh my goodness. And they are so cute together. Um, oh I feel like with the little one, um, I get an opportunity to really soak it in mm -hmm. because now we're at home and, and I have help now. You know, I didn't have a lot of help with the older one because we were traveling around and we didn't have a lot of family around. But now I feel like um, I can really breathe a little bit. Um, it's, it's going to be fun, you know, mm -hmm. watching her grow up here, doing the things that, that I did growing up. That and, is uh, awesome. they are, they are so different though. The older one, she's really quiet. And the younger one is just running around, <laughs> you know, she's in the room, you know, she's there. And, uh, that they have these awesome. different personalities and as parents, I don't know what we expect. Like we're going to have the same child twice. No one ever does, but you think you have in your mind what it's going to be like each time, mm -hmm. but they are totally different, like night and day. And I've enjoyed every minute of it. And please let them know that heaven 1460 WX. Okay. Welcomes them as well. One last question. One last question. Okay. And um, I cannot just end this interview without asking about Ella. How is Ella? Oh, Ella. <laughs> old. <laughs> that cat is 15 years old. Um, we got that cat and our hopes for the cat was, our hope was that she would see our oldest daughter off to college. Mm -hmm. And Ella did her job. And she is still kicking. Um, she's a peak face Persian. And oh. now the little one, the little one is asking for a hamster. And I said, well, Eva, cats and hamsters, they don't get along. <laughs> and she doesn't really understand that. So um, I said, you know, let, let, let's do this one animal right now. And, and you know, take care of Ella. We're, you're not doing that great of a job taking care of this one animal. So I don't want to introduce another animal into the house being more, you know, making it more complicated than it already is. Um, but she's a, an old lady now and she does a lot of sleeping and a lot of lying around. But uh, we say she's on borrowed time. Aww. She had a stroke. Can you believe that? <laughs> I had no idea that a cat could have a stroke. She neither, had a stroke. Neither did I. Like, like 10 yeah. years ago. And oh, wow. um, I had to bring her to the NC State Vet School. And she had a cat scan. And they told us that she had a neurological event. And um, mm. a lot of money later, she <laughs> came home. And she's been really good ever since. That so is do you awesome. have animal? I had, well, our little lovable pug went to heaven uh, in 2014, and he was uh, uh, 15 as well. He had cancer, and oh. we, too, had no idea that, I just didn't know that animals could get cancer. I did not know that they had their own oncologist, and as you stated, uh, uh, dollars, thousands of dollars later, we found yeah. out he had cancer, and so, yeah, we uh, had to... Uh, put him down December 7th, 2014, a day I never remember because that's the only child that I've ever had. So it was, kind yeah. of, it was hard, it was hard. So yeah, my little lovable pug is, uh, is enjoying heaven. Across the rainbow bridge, I think they call there it. There you go, there you go, yeah. there you go. I could but talk Ella's hanging you. on. That is awesome. <laughs> I could talk to you all day long, but DeAndre knows I'm not a selfish person. I don't want to take up time that the other talent is waiting to. And of course, COVID allow us to get out and be our uh, authentic selves 100%. I look forward to you being in the community and bringing your goodness to us and spreading it throughout the great state of, or great state of Louisiana, or I should just say the great city of Baton Rouge. Okay. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. And I do think that we will get past this, mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. we're experiencing right now. And when we do, you know, I, I look forward to being out and about and getting to see you and everyone else in person and Absolutely. just really get a feel for what life is going to be like here. It's been a dream. I'm just, I'm just so happy to be here. So stop pinching yourself because it's real. It's real. It's real. <laughs> You're in our homes. You are in our homes. And thank you. Thank you, Tisha Powell. Catch her 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. alongside Elizabeth Powell and Greg Merriweather. And once again, your Heaven 1460 family, we welcome you with an open heart, 
and open arms and we wish you the absolute best. Thank you. Thank you.